Okay, in this video we're going to explore binary programming or binary integer programming, also known as BIP, B-I-P. And this is a nice question to explore this concept in further detail. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. So here's our question. A small company has three projects to complete. That's project A, project B, and project C. The company has four employees, Alice, Bob, Charlie, and Dana. Each employee can be assigned to work only one project and each project needs exactly one employee. All projects must be completed. The goal is to assign employees to projects to maximize total productivity without exceeding a fixed budget of $600. So in this table, what we can see is that we'll just look at project A, for example. We have our employees, Alice, Bob, Charlie, and Dana. And then we have their level of productivity on project A as long as as well as the cost associated with them assigning them to project A. So I guess in theory these employees have different skill sets and it costs different amounts of money to have them do different types of projects and they'll have different levels of productivity depending on that project. So the um, nice part about this question is that they have told us that uh, the goal is to maximize total productivity so that's a good clue for our objective function. But before we get there, let's go ahead and define our decision variables. So we could go ahead and write out all these decision variables uh, one by one. That, of course, would take us quite a long time. So let's go ahead and use a shortcut. And what we're going to say is let x, i, j equal the employee assigned to project I. So the employee will say J assigned to project I. We can. And then we're going to say where I is equal to A, B, and C such that this is project such that a is equal to project a b is equal to project and c is equal to project c and then we're going to say where j is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, and this is where 1 is equal to Alice, 2 is equal to Bob, 3 is equal to Charlie, and 4 is equal to Dana. And we're going to say um, one other thing here, um, xij one and zero. Since we're dealing with a binary variable here, we're going to say uh, one if employee j is assigned to project I and zero otherwise. Meaning that the variable xij will take on the integer value of one if the employee is assigned to that project and otherwise that variable will uh, assume a value of zero, meaning that the employee was not assigned to that project. Now this will make sense a little bit more as we go on. So let's go ahead, now that we've defined our decision variables, let's write our objective function. So we know that we're looking to maximize productivity, so we're going to say max z, and then we're simply going to take these productivity scores here. So 50, x a1 plus 30, 
xb1 plus 40 xc1, right? These are the productivity values that are associated with Alice for each of the projects. This is xa1, xb1, and xc1. So now that we've done that for Alice, we need to go ahead and do that for all of our workers. So plus Bob, so this is plus 40 XA2 plus 70 XB2 plus 30 XC2 plus Charlie, which is 60 XA3 plus 60 X b3 plus 50 x c3 plus and then dana x a4 and this is 30 so 30 x a4 plus 40 x a whoops not x a x b x b4 plus 70 x c4 so that is our objective function now we have to write some constraints and we have a number of constraints here. So um, first we have to recognize that each employee can be assigned to work on only one project. Okay, so we're gonna say subject two. And we have constraints for each of our employees. So we start with Alice, we'll just say Alice. So we're going to say XA1 plus XB1 plus XC1 must be less than or equal to one. Okay, it has to be less than or equal to one because it doesn't say that every employee must receive a project. So we have to account for Alice might not receive a project. So then we can do the same thing for Bob, which is XA2 plus XB2 plus xc2 less than or equal to one. We have Charlie next. So xa, don't know why my pen kind of didn't work there. xa3 plus xb3 plus xc3 less than or equal to one. And then finally, Dana. So X A4 plus X B4 plus X C4 less than or equal to one. Okay. We are then told that each project needs exactly one employee. So what we're then gonna say here is that we have project A and this means that XA1 plus XA2, whoops, XA2, yep, that's right, plus XA3 plus XA4 is equal to one. Meaning that we can either assign Alice, Bob, Charlie, or Dana, and because it's a binary integer, meaning that it's one if they're assigned and otherwise zero, only one of them can be assigned to project A for this constraint to be met, that is equal to one. We'll do it again for project B. So this is XB1 plus XB2 plus XB3 plus XB4, again, equal to one. And then project C, This is XC1 plus XC2 plus XC3 plus XC4 is equal to one. Okay, very good. Now we have uh, a couple more constraints that we have to add in here. The next constraint that we have to address is that we have a fixed budget of $600 per $600, so we cannot exceed $600, and we have all of these different costs associated with it, so we're just gonna have to kind of uh, 
bear through it here. So our budget So let's start with Alice. So for project A, so it's gonna cost $200 for her on project A. So 200 XA1 plus project B is $150. So 150 XB1 plus $180 for project C, 180 XC1 plus, now we go on to Bob, so $100 for project A, so 100 XA2 plus 200 for project B and 150 for project C, so 200 XB2 plus 150XC2. Now we move on to Charlie. So 220 for project A, 160 for project B, and 200 for project C. So 200 for project A, so XA3 plus 160 for project B, plus, oh sorry, 220 for project A. One hundred and sixty for Project B and two hundred for Project C plus two hundred X C three, and then finally we got a deal with Dana. So ninety dollars for Project A, one hundred and ten for Project B, and two hundred and fifty for Project C. So ninety X A four plus one ten. X B four plus two hundred and fifty X C four, and then this all must be less than or equal to six hundred dollars. Okay, so that's our budget constraint, and then we have our last one here. So this is simply that X I J must be greater than or equal to zero. That's our non-negativity constraint. And then we will add one more and we're going to say end binary. Okay, and we will solve this in Microsoft Excel in the next video. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If this video helped make business analytics easy, consider giving the video a like. And if you need additional help with business analytics, please consider subscribing to the channel. I look forward to solving many more problems with you next time.